Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Have you ever heard of mean, median, and mode? Well, these are examples of a concept called measures of central tendency in statistics. A measure of central tendency is a kind of middle or representative number for what is typical in a data set. Three such measures are mean, median, and mode, and we're going to discuss one of these in this video. Let's talk about the mean. The mean is what most people associate with the word average. The mean of a sample of data values is denoted as x with a little line over it, and we read it as x bar. The mean of a population is denoted as mu, using the lowercase Greek letter mu. We use different notation for the sample versus the population because it's so important to distinguish between the two. But you'll find that the calculation for the mean is the same either way. The mean, also called arithmetic mean, of a data set is the sum of the items in the set divided by the number of items. It might not be intuitive as to why adding up a bunch of numbers and dividing by the number of numbers is going to give you a typical value for a data set. So let's take a look at a visual representation of what's happening. The mean of the data set 1, 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8 is going to be the sum of those values, which adds up to 28, divided by 7, the number of values in the set. 28 divided by 7 is 4. You can tell looking at the data set that 4 is roughly in the middle of the numbers, so that goes with the idea of central tendency. If you represent the data values, using rectangles that have a height corresponding to each data value and compare it to the mean of 4. What you'll see is that some of the values are below 4, some of them are exactly at 4, and some of them exceed 4. The interesting thing about them though is that the amount that the numbers that are deficient on the left would need to grow in order to reach 4 is actually exactly the same as the amount that the numbers on the right exceed it by. Imagine a tank full of water. When the water settles, it's exactly four units high. But when we slosh it around, parts of it are below four and parts of it are above four. If we allow the water to settle and fill in the gaps, then the entire tank will be level at four. That's what the average means. It's the height of the water if we let it settle. Now sometimes in statistics we use various symbols to tell us to perform operations. One of those symbols is the Greek letter capital sigma. It's kind of a wicked looking E. So if you put sigma in front of x, and x is the symbol for our data values, then what that's telling you to do is to add up all of your data values. This is going to help us to write the statistics formula for the mean. So if you have a set with n data items, and we want to add up those n items and divide by n, and we can write that as x bar equals sigma x, the sum of the data values, divided by n, which is the number of data values. So statistics formulas are not quite like the ones you see in algebra, where you plug in a value for each variable and you're done. Statistics formulas indicate a procedure. So let's try the procedure. Ten students in a math class were polled as to the number of siblings in their individual families and the results were 3, 2, 2, 1, 3, 6, 3, 3, 4, 2. Find the mean number of siblings for the 10 students. So we know that we have 10 data values. We have to add these data values, and that's what sigma x means, add up all the data values. Well, these data values add up to 29. Now we're going to divide by the number of data values to find out what the height of the water would settle down to in the tank. x bar equals sigma x over n is 29 over 10, which is 2.9. Notice that the mean is not actually a data value from the set. 2.9 doesn't appear anywhere in the list, which tells us that on average, the number of siblings is just a tiny bit less than three. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.